Hey everybody, if you're watching this video, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. Please be sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video. All right, so we're back for another review of Real Housewives of Potomac Season 7 Reunion Part 2, okay? So Candace, <laughs> it picked back up where Candace is talking about Giselle's dwindling uterus. All right, so Candace calls her out for saying Chris needs to apologize for what he did to me. She said, now tell us what he did to you. She said, he made me feel uncomfortable. I was like, bitch, how? Like, cut the bullshit, Giselle. You a damn liar. Just stop. Just stop. So Candace said, you played in my face. And then you used this show to make my husband look like a predator. I don't know that predator is the word. But kind of like a philanderer. Anyway, so Mia interrupts and says, no, no. Candace pointed that blue Power Ranger glove, honey, at her and said, shut up. In her Betty Wright voice, I said, yes, ma'am. That's how you get somebody together. When well, you don't even look at it. You just use your Power Ranger arm. Anyway, so Mia says, ooh, not my earring guy. I think got so excited. Um, so Mia... <laughs> <laughs> Mia says you should acknowledge that your husband was inappropriate with your friend. Giselle said no because he wasn't inappropriate. I was like, damn, Mia, you call yourself taking up for Giselle and Giselle. That's not even what Giselle is saying in her lie. Damn. So Giselle was like, no, he wasn't inappropriate. He made me feel uncomfortable. Bitch, you are lying. There is literally no evidence. When that shit with Michael Darby happened, we were hearing stuff on tapes. We had been hearing stuff like cut the fuck shit. Like just cut it out, bitch. Cut it out. All of that rollback episode after episode before the reunion. We knew this was bullshit. You should have come up with a better story in the meantime, but Giselle, you didn't. So they started playing back the footage. Andy asked Ashley when she saw the footage, he was like, what do you think? And Ashley said she was surprised. She said because the footage did not align with Deborah's story. All y'all bitches knew y'all was lying, but okay. And Deborah, according to Ashley, has always been truthful, bitch, that you know of. Um, Ashley, but you a liar. So Ashley says she maintains that um, it was editing. How are you going to use editing as a excuse when you're not even a cast member of any significance? How does that happen? It doesn't, Deborah, And that's why you weren't invited to the reunion. Get the fuck out of here. So then the happy Eddie and claiming he was flirting. Andy said, well, that was a reach. I was like, that was definitely a fucking reach. Okay. And your arms are too short. And it definitely was. All right. So it was so much a reach that when Ashley told Wendy at that restaurant, she shortened up the story because she knew it was bullshit. She didn't tell her everything Deborah was saying. Like he was flirting or whatever. And Wendy had just started laughing because she was like, okay, my husband smiles a lot. Anyway, so the lies where people's families are constantly being invoked and used against people is going to be the downfall of this show. And I really think that. It's a reality show. But at the point in which these lies have the power to damage reputations, and by lies, I mean absolutely no proof. No fucking proof to damage people's reputations and spiral out of control, this is going to have to come to a screeching halt. It is. And these girls aren't going to be willing to leave this check the way Monique was. See, Monique extracted herself. Anyway, we'll come back to Monique. So Andy brings up Candace's IG Live. Candace says she was disappointed with the way Robin brought it up because you are my friend. I was like, bitch, she not your friend? Like, Candace, are you really that fucking stupid? You are. Okay, so Robin says, I felt like everybody should have known so they could hear it. Um, she said, I didn't realize Candace had a lot of nice things to say about my business at the time because she only saw that clip. Karen said, who sent you that clip? She was like, well, it was part of a blog. And what she was really trying to get at was like, no, no, no. Who sent it to you? Like, like there was somebody else in the mix. I caught that, Karen, and that was nice. That was smooth. Anyway, and Robin, well, her, you know, she can't answer shit. So anyway... Robin said, well, we're on a reality show, so we should be living our whole lives on a camera. So why are you getting mad about me playing the IG live when you did it during filming? <laughs> the gag is they played that throwback to watch what happens live in Robin's interview. I'm bothered that the Bravo tech crew cameras and production. Okay. We're there to get Robin's wedding. Therefore, 
if we're being honest, she didn't really lie. The cameras got the footage. And when I say it was not the footage on a phone or like a TikTok live. So this is what I mean when I say all the lies and the deceit on this show is a sinking ship. Because let me tell you something. If she had done the Kenya Moore going to have your wedding without the cameras and under contract, then that would be an issue. We never had that kind of footage. Nothing that she, unless she showed us. Bravo was there. They were mic'd up. This was not cheap footage. So whether or not we liked the way the information came out, they were there. That's what I'm saying. It's some bullshit somewhere. This is a sinking ship. Uh, I don't think the show is going to make it long term. I really don't. So Candace gets a question that when she said that she looked up to Robin the most in the group, the viewer asked, well, what about Wendy? That's a great question, viewer. So Candace says she doesn't understand why she can only have one girlfriend in the group or has to love one more. And I'm like, no, we're not talking about love. We're not talking about that. We're talking about who you look up to. That's significant. That's different. And she said, well, she has known Robin longer than Wendy. Giselle is rolling her eyes and looking confused. Like, bitch, you don't know her. Like, I know her. And I bet she don't. Anyway, so Wendy said to Candace, but you did say Robin was the most loyal to you. And then the next thing we know, Robin put the JBL on the table. And I looked at you and said, this is who's the most loyal to you? So the bottom line was Wendy felt away, And her feelings were hurt. Because here y'all are supposed to be bonding so close. And Candace, you pushing this colorism shit. And then what may have been an example of how they had ganged up on you. You undermine it by saying how close and tight y'all are and shift it with you to the side. You, that's not cool. That's not cool. P.S. Did y'all notice how the grand dom was grand doming? She was not for the bullshit. She was like, I'm, I'm not feeding into this. Let me know when it's my time to speak. Anyway, Wendy said she felt a way about that comment. And, and we get it. I understand at least. So Robin said, we all have dynamic friendships in this group. It shouldn't matter. No, bitch. You didn't want to get called to the carpet. Okay? So the fact remains, Candace, when you said that Robin was the most loyal... That sounded like bullshit to me at that time anyway. And it sounds like you still ask kissing. Like, to be a part of the girls. For somebody who continues to talk about colorism and how you get labeled differently as a dark-skinned woman, so on and so forth, and still to be up Robin's ass, even though she's best friend with the woman who's been lying on your husband, I'm gonna need for you to pray for a better spirit of discernment. Or a spirit of discernment, should I say. Because whoo! We lost. So they have Giselle's segment. And they talk about her podcast live show when they mixed up their names. That shit was just tired. Then it kind of became Karen's segment. <laughs> when Karen gets to talking, they show those flashbacks of her comments about her house and how she's living and her podcast show and what not to do. Um, then they show her dating a man like Steve. Giselle. Okay. Uh, then they had brought up the girls' sweet 16. I completely forgot about that party. But what they should have asked was, didn't Jamal say he never wanted to be on this show again? So why did he show up knowing that the cameras would be there for your daughter's birthday? Now, see, y'all need to take her to task. And people always miss those opportunities. So Robin said they are coming up on 80 podcast shows and 4 million downloads. Robin said we had never even listened to a podcast before doing it. Wendy was like, that is not why. <laughs> like, that is not a flex. Why wouldn't you do research into it? And Robin was like, don't hate. And then I was like, uh, Wendy, with that Nigerian uh, bar lounge library for kids, I, I don't know that you want to talk much about that either. Anyway, then they started talking to Karen because Giselle's segment was just that boring and revealing about her failure to maintain the storyline. Giselle starts talking about her hysterectomy and the process it was she said that was the most feedback from women she's had since being on the show and a lot of women do feel like that a lot of women don't want a hysterectomy they're afraid they won't feel like a woman um or that they won't experience you know sex in the same way even after you know women have been able to give birth and have children and a lot of women experience it but there's a lot of shame around it 
Um, and I think that's why she got so much feedback. Candace said, because it's the first time you've been real about something. I was like, Candace, I get your issue with her. But that kind of thing, I just think sometimes you might want to take, just, just pull it back a smidgen. You, you want to pull it back with that. Cause that kind of stuff is very dangerous and, and black women don't always survive those kind of surgeries. And the way she described it, it did seem rough. So Giselle choked up about how she had to tell her daughters about her hysterectomy on camera. She tells Andy, like, we'll talk about it later. And Andy says, no, we're going to talk about it now. Like, bitch, you are, I was like, Ooh, shit. But I'm like, you're on a reality show and you always get to like control the conversation about things. So she said she, she um, was with her sister and at the time they were doing the, the surgery or whatever, her sister, her daughters were at the hospital and they were getting updates every hour. And then the updates stopped. She said, and that's what terrified my daughters. And she said the girls thought she wasn't coming home because it was supposed to be kind of a, um, what do you call it, outpatient surgery. And Andy brought up, um, and she said, my girls still don't even like to talk about it. And that can be traumatizing. That's who you depend on for everything. You think everything's going to be okay? That's scary as hell. So Andy brought up how she doesn't like to talk, Giselle, um, doesn't like to talk about her personal business, but she has an expectation for other people on the show to share their business. And everybody on the couch agrees that she has these different expectations. And my thing, she was like, well, I ask questions. They don't have to answer any question they don't want to know. Giselle, you will bully people into a response to keep people off of how fucked up your life is. Stop playing with us. It's been seven seasons. Quit playing with me. So um, she says, so they asked her about Steve. And she was like, well, if he comes to town, I see him. But I don't ask him to come to town. And Andy was like, well, with Jason, you know, I'm assuming you're not with him. She was like, yeah. He was like, has Jason met your daughter? She was like, yeah. And they grilled him. Um, but they liked all his answers. I was like, okay. He was like, if y'all are still together, when y'all start filming next season will he be on the show she was like yeah i was like you know just they'll be lying like a motherfucker we can't believe shit anyway so we get the wendy segment she started talking about that nigerian lounge remember she was gonna have the bar lounge and then from two to four the kids would come to the library i completely forgot about that shit but something about that tickled me again uh i can't believe how much i got i forgot from the season I, it's almost like i feel like there was two separate seasons anyway so they were playing the scenes with mia through the water in Wendy's face for no fucking reason. Cut the bullshit. Okay. So they talked about also um Wendy's health and she said she has to increase her water intake and stay stress free. Um honestly I increased my water intake after watching her because I was like, oh I I'm 35. We're roughly around the same age. I don't want that to happen to me. So thank you. Th thank you, Wendy, for that girl. Andy asked Mia to explain her relationship with G. Um, and why that seemed to, uh, you know, elicit a reaction toward Wendy. She says they knew each other through his ex-girlfriend. Um, she asked, he asked me, I'm sorry. He asked me to explain her relationship with G and Peter. And she says, well, we knew each other through his ex-girlfriend who's no longer his girlfriend. And Andy was like, I don't understand why you threw the water in her face. She said, Wendy was talking about several things. And Candace was like, no. You took it to a whole nother level when you threw the drink. And yes, bitch, you did. Period. Hard. Stop. We saw it. Cut it out. Bullshit. So Wendy got mad and was like, it's almost been a year and you still can't take responsibility for assaulting me. And that was fucked up. And you could tell it really um, fucked with me. And when she started crying and, you know, of course she did. What we all have a tendency to do. I'm a strong person. It's okay. You were assaulted and picked on. And a bunch of bitches around the table were encouraging hood rat Mia to continue that. They're hypocrites. They're not your friends. All right. Anyway, so then Mia says, you want to talk about the real reason you had an attitude with Peter because you wanted him to give him, you wanted to give him the cookie. Mia. <laughs> Mia, when I say you have no credibility, and you are one of the biggest liars I've seen on reality TV. You might be up there with Jackie Christie, that first season of basketball. 
fuck LA, okay? You are a terrible liar. And she was like, she's just saying it to have something to say. And we all know that's what it is. Wendy, don't nobody believe that. And anybody who believe that is just as dumb as Mia. Anyway, am I the only one who noticed the absolute silence of the other women who witnessed this assault except Candace? I was like, y'all some weak bitches. Y'all just all together on this. Why? Because y'all got a chip on y'all shoulder when it comes to Wendy. And even though like Ashley kind of had her back, she didn't say shit. I was like, that's not cool. That's not cool. Karen said something once. Um, Robin brought her name into it. And Robin still is sticking to this. Candace, I mean, Karen could have stopped it. She should have said something. Bitch, you was the one egging it on. You could have stopped doing that. And that was Karen's point. But Mia, I just want you to know these bitches who's suspending you now, um, you're next next season. Just so you know, because that's how they roll. Anyway, so Mia claims to have a receipt of Wendy wanting to give Peter the cookie. Wendy said, well, you're fucking for lobsters. Mia said, yeah, and I don't deny it. <laughs> I said, I said, this is why I can never get to a point where I just hate Mia because Mia is so like dumb and she's such a wild card like it's not worth getting so fucked up over it's not so they asked how robin could tell wendy don't antagonize the situation after you were in that umbrella scene with monique and they played that shit back twice um then karen said so why did you say if you're not gonna do it anything then shut up and fight wendy said that if someone was to slap me as dumb ass i would have said something then fucking Giselle over there and them cheap ass rhinestones and that dress that's about to fucking tear um, says, oh, well, that's not nice. But this bitch is dumb and she did throw water in her face. Actually, compared to what Mia did to her, for her just to call her a dumb ass on TV, that is nothing compared to what she did. Period. Giselle, you a bitch. Then they started talking about Wendy and Robin's back and forth. When they were sitting down at the point in which Sharice had to restrain Robin. And they're playing the footage back. And then uh, they were like, Robin, you're hypocritical. Because you got in her face. And then you're talking about all these other people who shouldn't be doing this and shouldn't be doing that. Then they said, Ashley flip-flopped on violence this season. I don't know that that's fair. I actually don't think that's fair. Um, Ashley said nobody defended Wendy that night. And she said, I thought that was unfair. So I had her back. Ashley said, Candace went on and on about, she said, and with the Monique situation, Candace just kept going on and on about how Monique was a poor representation of black women. And she was shunned. And Candace was like, she is and should have been. Bitch, that's why I don't like you, Candace. Okay, among many reasons. Because I don't really like nobody on this cast hardly except for Karen. Um, because my thing is you're still perpetuating the same kind of language that you claim is so damaging to you as a dark skinned woman, as a brown skinned woman. And Monique, when it was happening to her in real fucking time, when y'all was in those yellow dresses, nobody opened a fucking mouth, the whole fucking cast and had you not been running your mouth on twitter shit the rest of america would have been on your side except for me because i was not here for it you, you deserve to get your wig shifted get, get the fuck up out of here so then andy points out that giselle didn't think there was anything wrong with mia but then harped on monique um for how she popped candace and i wanted to say well uh andy you need to check yourself because you was definitely on that train too Okay, so that's one of the many reasons why I don't like you, all right? So then Andy um, points out to Giselle and says, well, you f said you felt uncomfortable with Chris. And Mia is now saying she felt violated. Why can't you honor her feelings? Now, that was an excellent point. Because my thing is, we have all the tape and evidence of how that shit went down. We don't have shit from you, Giselle. J miss me and robin's word don't mean a damn thing to me do you this bitch had the nerve giselle this bitch had the nerve to sit there and say yeah i don't like her oh are you serious right now <clears throat> so she had water and a martini thrown in her fucking face and because you don't like her it doesn't matter 
And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Giselle Bryant, Giselle Graves Bryant in a motherfucking nutshell. And that should tell you why she was so willing to throw Monique under the motherfucking bus. Because that's how that bitch operates. Especially when she's jealous of you because you have something she doesn't. I.e. a husband. I.e. an intact family. I.e. something going on for yourself. Because Monique had all those things and Wendy does too. Next. So Candace, you showed your slip too. Because when you continue to talk poorly about Monique, and I touched on this a bit, which is why your colorism argument seems like bullshit to me. And I've already given my piece on this. I, I know there's going to be some ignorant people get down in the comments. Oh, you light skin, so you don't understand. No, no, no. No, 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 no. That's not what this is. Okay? You are still, with your argument, holding on to the narrative that Monique's aggressive and violent and dangerous and bad for black women. But you claim... The issue with colorism is that the group describes you as aggressive, but not Ashley and Giselle and Robin. Lest we forget, Candace, you took a whole ass fucking knife and threw it at Ashley. Now, was Ashley running her fucking mouth too much? You goddamn right she was. Now, did she deserve that she would have gotten her ass with that night? She sure would have. But the thing is, the game you keep playing and crying and breaking down, it just robs me when people can't fight with their words. When they can't fight with their words, you couldn't fight with your words then. If that knife would have hit her, Candace, you would be in jail, honey. You would be in jail, like for real, for real. So miss me with the bullshit. All right. So anyway, so they talk about the issue of colorism. And I think this was better done. Um, there was apparently audience feedback about the colorism on the show. And he said he didn't think he should lead the segment as a white man. Agreed. Okay. They had the producers talk to each person individually. And they said they wanted to talk about it as a group. Candace gets to start the conversation because she's been the most vocal about it. She decided to read the Merriam-Webster definition because she said that we can't have a conversation about colorism unless we agree to the definition. I agree with that. Candace claims that colorism has shown itself because she has been known to yell and jump in people's face. She says, I've been called emotional and a crybaby and the emotional one in the group. And Giselle had the same question I did. Because I was with, I was expecting her to go in another direction. And Giselle was like, what does that have to do with your skin color? Like, Candace, you cry all the fucking time. They would literally do that to anybody else on the cast. On an African-American cast. Because you, you know that's just not how people are. <laughs> I'm sorry. But, like, if you want people to cry all the time, it's like, boo, get it together. Get it together. Get yourself together. Like, I mean, like, in black culture, that's just not, like, a thing. So, I'm not saying that you can't cry, but you cry all the time. Okay, but that's not because you're dark-skinned. That, I mean, to me, she's just like a, like a caramel brown anyway, but she's referring to herself as such, and who am I to tell anybody? But that's what I mean. Colorism is subjective. Um, I'm sorry, but... As much as I hate to say it, G that was legitimate. Giselle, what Giselle was asking was legitimate, okay? Now, Karen said, I think it's important for us to personalize it. And I appreciated that. Karen starts talking about how her family brought back the plantation where her ancestors were enslaved. And she starts talking about how the darker slaves were in the field, how a lot of lighter slaves were in the house. Historically, this is not true. This is why... People have to read their history, but until you get a chance, allow me. So let me explain to you, in the, in, in the United States of America, the reason why you had the one drop rule makes you black was because while um, the most slaves were imported to Brazil from Africa, they never got up to more than one million at a time. Because the intensity of sugar and raising coffee as a crop was so intense, okay? And the Portuguese who, who colonized Brazil, the Spanish who colonized, hell, almost everything, Dominican Republic, Cuba, uh, Colombia, Mexico, you name it. All of those people, the French who colonized Haiti, all of them came with very few white people, but they had guns. 
and they had weaponry that enslaved Africans did not have. And Africans on the west coast of Africa, where they got the majority of their enslaved population from, did not have these weapons. Where am I going with this? In the United States, the United States was the only settler colony. The English had an overpopulation problem, okay? Something called the enclosure movement where they had moved all the poor white tenants off the land and so they went into the cities looking for work. And when people don't have work, crime increases. And so to get rid of this, this ragtag population that they consider vagabonds and dangerous, they began to send these people over, not so much with the same desire of exploration, colonization, and invasion, the way the Spanish and the Portuguese and the French did, but really to get rid of this excess population. And if they survive, good, go settle that land and figure it out and we'll still take taxes on it. But if y'all die, we don't care. That was the fucking attitude. Check your history books, okay? Why do I say this? Because the United States imported the least amount of slaves. I'm going somewhere with this. They only, I hate to say only, but only imported 5% of all the millions of Africans that were part of the Atlantic slave trade. What's the difference? The United States inbred their slaves because it was more costly to take a ship from the West Coast of Africa and bring them all the way to the United States. So they started forced fucking breeding, okay? Which is the reason why our complexions are so buried now. Okay, now, the one drop rule that makes it black because the United States, unlike these other colonies, were not just there to make money. Those white people stayed, okay? Inbred had the highest number of slaves at 4 million as opposed to the 1 million in Brazil with the highest importation rate. Stay with me. And then what happens when you start having what inevitably becomes, and as I explained to my students, whenever, I don't give a shit what kind of bullshit you see on TV, when you own a human being as property, which is what chattel slavery is, when you own a human being as property, sex is never consensual. So what would happen is when you had those mulatto babies, those mixed race babies who come out of black women, because God knows white women cannot produce little black babies like that at that time and expect to live and that baby expect to live. What happens is the resentment for that black woman that was raped and her child, light-skinned slaves were actually less likely to be in the house. In fact, they were more commonly sold away and kept in fields because of that reason. There, there was not that kind of distinction. That is more common in places like Cuba, Haiti, Brazil, because they always had more Africans than Europeans there. So they had to create those colored categories with the intention so they would not identify with each other and rebel. And once the Haitians figured that out, they became the first free democratic republic in the Western Hemisphere. Okay, so what I'm not going to do is play this, and I realize Malcolm X used that in his speech to help make a point, but what I'm saying is, historically, that is not true. Check Ira Berlin's book, Many Thousands Gone. Check the book, um, The Half That Has Never Been Told, regarding enslavement and the cotton plantations. This shit has been documented. I'm not making this up. I'm not pulling this out of thin air. And so we have these colorism conversations. People really need to actually read books on your Kindle, hardback, because I am somebody, I am a voracious reader, even when it's driving me crazy because I have to work and, 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 and grade my students' papers because I like to stay up on stuff so I can constantly um, give them the best version, particularly my 11th graders, of American history, even if that means I get accused of teaching CRT, and I have, but we're going to talk about that. Anyway, so Karen says to understand and acknowledge how Candace is feeling, though which I thought was an appropriate way to deal with it. Um, and this is why I appreciate Karen and the way she handles tough situations. And I'm sure there are feelings that Karen has, particularly as somebody with a brown, beautiful daughter. No, I don't think Karen is colorist. No, I don't. And I think that term is getting thrown around a little bit too much. Um, and has anybody noticed who is glaringly absent from these conversations we have on colorism? Anybody know this? Who, who doesn't seem to show up? Black men. 
black men and black women try to overcorrect. Well, I mean, granted, people are attracted to whatever they're attracted to, but try to overcorrect. And, oh, I don't date light skinned men. I don't do this. I don't do that. That's a form of colorism. I don't give a sh That's preferential treatment, a ma'am. Okay? So even that, but a lot of our issues as black women, colorism tends to come up more. I'm not saying it doesn't with men. Trust me, it does. What I'm saying is with black women, I think one of the things we need to acknowledge is that a lot of that resentment comes from how we feel like black men are or are not attracted to us. And that makes us feel rejected. That's really at the core of a lot of it. I'm sorry, but, but it's true. No, I'm not sorry. Fuck it. That's what I think. So then Mia got teary and was like, I have never been accused of being a colorist. And I was like, you probably didn't know that word, but okay. And she was like, I am raising a beautiful brown girl. And she was like, I have a lot to learn. And, and that was real. And like I said, I don't think Mia is a bad person. I really don't. I just think Mia is obtuse as fuck. But I don't think she lacks compassion. I think she's just, she she's just not bright okay so however candace i, I do want to point something else up about candace because i made a video earlier this week i didn't post it because I, I i'm trying to develop a relationship with my subscribers in a way where i want to be real to my feelings but also learn as much as possible about how i feel about candace specifically and colorism but lest we forget candace grew up in a home where her mother encouraged and supported her being in beauty pageants from a young age, okay? And the restrictions and the expectations around beauty are also, I think, what is lurking in her psyche because she has not dealt with her problems. That's why I think she's so aggressive with other women. Yes, I used it. Um, and so gung-ho whenever she has relationships with women and cannot keep strong friendships, because she doesn't know how, because she has unreconciled issues with her psychologist mother. Even in those earliest seasons when she would call Candace and would be like, well, how's your weight? You know, what are you doing? Like, you know, those kind of things. And I think those things also have an effect on Candace and how she sees herself. Um, Jacqueline comes out. And I mean, not comes out, but comes out. And Mia starts rolling her eyes. They start talking about their weird relationship. And it is weird taking showers together as grown women. Um, so they show how their relationship broke down. Jacqueline says she felt like Mia wanted to drag her down and appear as her peasant. And I think the dynamics in their relationship became magnified on this show. And thus became strained because of the cameras and the attention and the structure of reality TV and that kind of thing. And they took it back to her. Andy asked what I thought was a good question. He took it back to her living as a foster sister. And he says, is it that maybe you're trying to reverse the relationship? Did you feel like you didn't belong? And now you want to do that? And Mia said, no. She was like, they treated me like one of their own. And um, she says, I wish it was, you know, I wish he was like, are you still close with her parents? He was, she was like, I wish I was more close. And basically, Jacqueline's like, after seeing the season, my family is pissed. So Jack, Mia was like, well, whatever, whatever. I Anybody who knows me knows I can fight and then get up the next morning and pretend like nothing happened. And Jacqueline goes, that's exactly the problem. She was like, Mia, you're unhinged. And she was like, and that's why your family business and stuff is in shambles. And Mia was like, don't do it. She pulls out this box, this sprinkly box from Michael's. Her daughter probably decorated it. And they get to talking about what they're going to pull out and receipts and everything else. I, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm already prepared not to believe half of what they say. But nevertheless, those are just my thoughts. Please share your thoughts in the comments. Just be respectful. Um, and please be sure to subscribe to the channel and like. And I'll talk to you all soon. All right. Bye-bye.